Hello, SJ Davies. This will just be a compilation of a number of experiments, demonstrations, how to move heavy objects. One that most people should have probably heard about should be, is Wally Wallington. So, for instance, he shows how to roll stones. Here he just places pebbles underneath large stones and essentially then uses leverage and the pebble as a pivot, something like a bearing, to twist these around. He uses that method with two pebbles to actually move the stones forward, so he rolls it forward uh, a little bit at a time, but you know, very heavy objects, m moving them, manipulating them. So you know, how, how do you get these big ancient blocks in place? It's not just uh, moving, it's also manipulating them to get them into the right place. And so you're going to see a combination of methods here. So for instance, here he's doing quite a large uh, block and very, you know, leverage pivot points. These things are also, you know, pebbles obviously, but in ancient Egypt, for instance, they've got pivot stones that they find. Here, here he is lifting and then placing a 20-ton block, something like the uprights at Stonehenge. No wheels, no compound pulleys, just he's going to use a seesaw effect and he walks back and forth, back and forth, each time lifts it up a little bit until he can get a new piece of timber underneath, walks to the other side, seesaw, seesaw, and he's just going to keep moving this thing up. Very primitive tech you know not any even not, not even a compound pulley which doesn't require advanced bearings or anything but he's lifted this on his own he's lifted a 20 ton block up off the ground and now he's going to use a very simple principle to place the stone in, in it and, and make it upright uh, essentially the same method uh, in principle as they did in the Serapium to lower those giant boxes in they filled the pit with sand and they emptied it out and then the you know, giant, impossible to move megalith boxes were ab able to be lowered in place. Now he's going to do the same here. He's tethered one side. He's going to release the, the rope. The, he's got the weights there on the other. The bottom of the stone is going to fall into this pit, which he has prepared with sand already. And then he's going to wash the sand out. Now I've seen people say, well, they didn't have hoses back in the day. You could use a bucket to empty out the sand. I should, we'll have a look at a very similar example um, in a moment. Uh, again, I, you know, these lost high tech guys, it's oh, they didn't have sand because they don't understand that the principles of you know little kids in, at the beach with bucket and spade. But there he has. He's put it in, put it into the pit, emptied out the sand and he's raised it upright. Once a, even a big heavyweight is upright, just pull on the top. Uh, here's experiments where they were um, looking at, at raising an obelisk. There's two methods here where you can see now they're using this like an A-frame um, and then a roller to, to uh, put it in. It's almost identical to the method that they used to raise the giant obelisk in, in Paris when they moved it there from Egypt. Um, yeah, leverage, A-frames, very, you know, as primitive as primitive technology gets. And this is one possible uh, method to do that. Uh, now that they're showing the model here, but let's look at an example. Uh, now they're going to use a sand pit model, very much the same. You can lift something by dragging it up a ramp. You don't, you know, big difference between dragging something along the ground, including a ramp, and what it is deadlifting something. So they've brought it up the ramp, they've built a cage, a magazine, that's filled with sand, you drain the sand out and they're going to, and they did lower that obelisk um, into place. And th again, these are people who haven't done this, experimenting, replicating it, even looking at the little notches that are on the bases of the obelisk and showing how they were used uh, to help. So the, the corner of the obelisk hits this little groove that's cut in there and that locks it in place and stops it sliding out from the bottom. And you just em empty out the sand, just to reiterate. Serapium boxes, some, well, at least one was found where still the pit was still filled with sand. So again, as an example of uh, these uh, recreations, uh, you know, well, why don't they do more? Because they're super expensive. The insurance that would go with this, and the you know, you you have to be responsible. You don't want people getting injured, and you have insurance. Just the cost of of getting a granite obelisk, or even just making a replica one with uh, reinforced concrete, is no small thing. But yeah, these things do work, and we see um, examples of these. And again, it's I think it's very curious that the people who for 
years and years have been running tours and all of this, I mean, asking, just asking questions, why aren't these replica, uh, re, um, replicas made, recreations done? Well, why aren't they speaking about these? Why, isn't they, why aren't they presenting these type of compilations? Because it would ruin their business if uh, these type of things were shown and they dealt with them um, in an honest way. It's very important for them to exclude this type of information from their audience uh, because well, they just they they can't sell their they can't sell their wares if if facts and the actual experiments that they want done are presented to have been done. Quick example: two ladders on top of each other use leverage to slide them across. Uh, so moving you know heavy stones not a problem. Uh, for instance, in Machu Picchu and these places, you know. Either you give ancients ability to, to do problem solving and to use the tools that were available or you don't. Here's some bored teenagers with a lever and yeah, voila, you know, like they, um, yeah, they're doing this for a lark, you know, not for historical purposes. But uh, compound pulleys, it's, you don't need all these fancy frictionless bearings, it's two sticks and a piece of rope looped around this little girl is going to beat these two adults all the time because she understands, you know, she knows how to use mechanical advantage. South Americans were master rope, uh, and you know, they were masters with the rope. So why, but in, you know, they don't need fancy bearings, two sticks, and some rope, and you've got a compound pulley system. Here's another example of moving um, big uh, objects. I think this is about 15 ton, but using levers and the rowboat technique. And again, if you tendency will be, oh, but look, and they didn't, and they failed this. They've never done this before, so this is their first day on the job. You look at the age and stuff of some of the volunteers, you know, these are not exactly people in their prime who had uh, experience of doing this. This is like their first day on, on the job. So with impromptu, you know, on ad hoc improvements, for, for instance, cutting those grooves in the levers to help it bite in and to stop it slipping, that improved. Uh, they came back on the second day with a few more uh, volunteers and they got a, a lot better at, at doing this. So I think, again, when the sort of lost high tech ancient aliens were, oh, this is a failure, you know, but, uh, this is, yeah, this is on, on their first day. And again, it's very curious that the people who actually have the resources, which you know, is the lost high tech ancient aliens people, they have the huge views, huge numbers, production companies making it. Uh, but they haven't done a thing to answer their own questions because they don't want them um, answered. So, really primitive, really basic ways of moving large objects, it is just not a problem. It's presented as such by those who are profiting from it. So, you know, on their first day they made some movement and they go, oh, well, yeah, but then it would, you know, Danny went so far. Uh, well, that's assumed, like, oh, it takes too long to cut stone. Do you think, you know, it happened overnight that these things were made in one day because some legend says it appeared overnight, therefore, oh, you know, whatever method must be able to achieve building the Parthenon in six hours because of some old legend. Again, you now here's the same, you now there's a new crew, more people, they got, you know, they uh, learnt from their, you know, one day previous experience and then they've turned it into an, a very effective method. Now can I say, is this exactly how it was done? Well, no one can say that, we don't have a time machine. But for those who say, well, it can't be done, it's impossible, it requires advanced technology and it didn't exist back in the ancient times. This is just, again, yeah, a, um, a, it's a nonsense, it's not true. And it's an argument that comes from bad faith because yeah, the experiments exist, like where are the, oh, I want to see these. You still won't see the, the, the business side of the you know alternative history ever compile something like this and show it to you and show it to you in a uh, good faith way. This is that same team now, and okay, so can you move it? Well, how would you raise you know, how would you raise these blocks to a higher level? And they're going to do almost identical to what Wally Wallington did. Say, so for instance. Can you lift, you can't lift your own couch at home or sofa, but you could lift one end, you put a phone book under one side, you go to the other end, you lift it, you put a phone book in, go back to the other side and repeat and you can lift it. And that's what they're going to do here. They're going to lever it up just enough to get, you know, uh, 
the minimum amount of, of a log or a you know, piece of wood or pile stone underneath and then rest it on and then lever it again and then repeat the process. And uh, okay, so it's not done in five minutes, you know, as a, a crane would do, but what's not taken into account is the thousands and thousands of hours that it, it takes to build a crane as well. So if this is a little bit slower, uh, it's still faster than you know building a crane from scratch. And just as uh, there is zero technology, uh, zero evidence for lost high technology. All their argument is, well, here's the artifact. It can't be explained. Therefore, we must assume that there was lost, you know, ancient, you know, precision technology. And uh, yeah, and that's why they can't make a backward step um, in that art because their argument relies on uh, incredulity and ignoring actual data and evidence and experiments that come in there. So, can you lift giant heavy blocks? with a small untrained crew? Yeah, absolutely, yes you can. You know, imagine if your father had been developing his skills and built it up. So now that block there you see on the edge, that's heavier than the, the normal polygonal type stone that you would see um, around. There are some heavier examples, but the average one in Machu Picchu, Cusco and these other places is much less in size and therefore weight than this. Uh, so, you know, he's I consider a prop, you know, a proper parent, grandparent, sh showing his child, teaching, you know, h how to do things instead of saying it can't be done and belittling, you know, this guy's a bit. You know, he, this is a proper person, you know, teaching how, you know, his knowledge, passing it on. The antithesis of ancient lost high technology. Oops, look, we made a mistake. You know, these these things happen. Now we know how to fix it the next time. But it, there's a, you know, one example of how to move and manipulate these there's no shortage of method that's that's the other thing it's not like can you do it it's well exactly how do you want to do it and what would be the best method and uh, coming up in a moment we're going to see what's called the Egyptian hoist by Wally Wallington and so the principle in this next video is going to be where is the ramp for the Great Pyramid well the outside casing stones are the ramp you know the, the pyramid itself is a ramp and you know, using basic physics which we now have equations for and we can calculate things on a piece of paper without having an experiment but you know, uh, so for instance there's a 26 degrees of the um, internal ramps of the Great Pyramid and uh, 51.8 52 degrees of the exterior and by walking down one ramp while pulling up he's given himself extra power because he's now walking he's, he's essentially going to fall down the ramp by walking down it and that means he's going to be able to pull more weight than if he was just to be walking across a horizontal surface uh, no fancy bearing is just a, a round piece of stone just to reduce and help the friction of of the lift Ra um, yeah so ramp on the outside and to go well that stone's only small okay well he's only one person so the physics don't, sh there's not sort of like a magic weight where the physics just changes and you know, and you need a new set of rules. This demonstration would work at any weight. So you double the weight of a stone, you have two people. Triple the weight of a stone, have three people. This is, these are the immutable laws of physics. Um, often say, well, that's one ton, but what about a hundred ton? Well, it's exactly the same as these examples are. Just multiply it by the scale of, of the available workers on there. So, raising 185 pounds 10 feet in six seconds so it's, it's half a horsepower um okay so what about a bigger block with a few more people and uh, this is not a problem and as he shows at the end he's going to give a figure of uh, how many people it would take to raise all the stones in the great pyramid in a okay yeah so three people e even easier so and very very fast as well so it's going to be uh, 505 pounds, 10 feet in four seconds. I know, sorry, he was having this uh, a standard rolling bearing. Again, I've mentioned there are pivot stones found in Egypt, used ones like in, for door axles and stuff. 400 workmen could lift in less than two years all the stone of the Great Pyramid. His experiment, uh, Tor Heyerdahl in Easter Island, they're moving a Moai, and so first it's... Um, dragging the stone and it doesn't I'm going to show you much better examples in there I think that the 
they're using a bit of a uh, not the best method here. Uh, recently it became popular on that uh, Squid Game TV show, it became very popular. There was a tug of war scene and they won the tug of war because someone knew how to knew the trick of the trade and how to win. Okay, here they are lifting it in a very similar, you know, raising the moai and they're using levers and they raise it a little bit and sort of the opposite of emptying out the sand, now they're putting sand in and each time they raise it, bang, you put a stone under there, keep pulling it up and raising it and just you know, increment. They were not at this for six months. This is, you know, I'm not sure exact timeline, but I'm guessing it would be in a, within a day. And for an important big move, well, uh, that's, how, that's how the things roll. And so this is an example of erecting and also positioning the stone really well because you can now sort of tug on the side and to get the base exactly where you want it. Here's a similar, there, there have been other later examples with bigger stones and uh, they're going to walk the stone. This is another example that the big long block or the big tall statue is a lever and you can apply leverage to it so by tilting it side to side just like you can grab a big heavy fridge and you can tip it over and, and, and walk it so this is what people you know, who, who during moving they sort of come they, when they're moving house I'll stumble upon these tricks or they'll pay someone a lot of money to to do this type of stuff so yeah moving a big um, stone as well with the most primitive of technologies is not a problem now when they come to uh, Mussolini's monolith, absolute bohemoth. This is 300 tons, and it's just on a wooden sled with wooden rails. And they're not just going to move it; they're going to move it very precisely. And uh, I've mentioned this in in a few um, other videos. And one of the ways that they move it precisely is that they have the rails uh, with rails on the outside, and then going in the direction of the move, and then cross rails going across which are tilted at like a V and, and so that gravity is going to keep those this heavy object in the middle of the block because there's a V like a little valley and well gravity is going to push it down there the same principle that train wheels are train on the train you'll but they're not flat they have a slight uh, taper to them and that's to keep the train on the tracks and this is the same principle and they're going to again not just move it, move it very precisely through this uh, little tunnel there underneath the bridge. Notice they're bringing it down the mountain, so the rope is tied behind it. If you're dragging something down a mountain with sleds or rollers, you don't pull from the front, you have to put the brakes on at the back. And so there'll be other examples. So they're moving down from a mountain top, they're gonna take it down to, the, uh, to a port and put it on a barge eventually. But if you're, if you're going down the mountain, you have the rope tied behind because yeah, you got, it's not about getting it moving. The problem is getting it to stop. And so we'll, and we'll see some more clips of them where they've got a team of oxen at the front pulling it because as you're going down, like uh, there might be one or two mountain roads here which are down all the way, but you know, if you've ever been on a mountain path, mountain road, okay, it's down, but every once in a while you have to go up a hill. So this, oh, they dead moving at 300 tonnes downhill, oh, that's it, you know, easy. Well, they're all, along the way, they're also going to have to move it uphill, and this is all done with primitive tech. Uh, there are portions as well, I'm not sure if that's fibre rope, so you don't need the steel rope to do it. The tensile strength of uh, good quality fibre rope, hemp rope, for instance, again, can like, handle these weights. These people are not a historical recreation society, they're doing what is the most economic and what they know to work. Um, in there again please pay attention to the, the rails going across the ones going across again you'll see that they're shaped like a valley and that's how they're able to steer this thing and keep it um, moving down and they get, yeah, very precisely they've got this through that down a hill around a bend um, and through this tunnel uh, yeah and old, again old school um, method so very similar to the actual pictures that we see from ancient times of, of people in uh, Syria and Egyptian moving giant objects as well this, these are ancient methods and, and they work uh, for the next part of the journey it was taking it from the quarry up in the mountain and taking it down of a port on the coast 
And now they've got a team, I think it was 72 oxen. Um, someone corrected me, I thought it was 80. Uh, they're in front, but they're really getting important points. We'll see examples of this. So they're steering it through these very, very tight roads. Again, notice that the, on the outside, they've got rails moving in the direction, and then they have ones running across, and they're angled downwards. They're creating this valley, this V. Uh, they use uh, detergent as lubricant, and they use rough logs, not squared off nice ones, to reduce the chance of a suction cup going on and stopping it. There's only so much railing that they've got, then they have to replace it and move it to the front. They move a step at a time. Very important, and I'll show you human examples of uh, why humans are better in a way. Because each time they start moving, uh, forget, is it um, uh, inertia? So the, you know, basically, if something's not moving, it wants to stay that way. If something is moving, it wants to keep on moving. So the hard part is not dragging the block along, it's getting it started. It's that first kick of movement. Because these are oxen, they're not working in sync. So it's, now they've stopped. They move the rails forward for the next you know, part of the journey. And now all the oxen are pulling, they're pulling and to get it started, they're struggling, they're not moving. And then you'll see in a moment, crack, and then it's just gonna start moving. The reason why they struggle is because they're not synchronized. Unlike a human team, and I'll show you examples, um, yeah, once they start moving, they, you only need a portion of them. They, that force is there just to, to get them started. They move it and then reset the rails. They set like a V to steer them along. And being oxen, they're not synced. So they, and I'll bring that example, I mentioned the squid game example. Like the tug of war is not about everyone just like jerking on it randomly. If you all tug and pull at exactly the same time and instead of just like pulling and just keeping that pressure on, it's more like t tug, tug, tug. And then off you go. Now, oxen, good. Now we're going to see human example. That's about a metre thick, by, I don't know, 10 metres, uh, maybe a bit less, and about four or five metres wide. That's a very heavy stone there. Plus, there seems to be this like cap there on top. Uh, one by 10 by 4, 40. So, I'm not sure if that was just quickly, roughly in my head, but we'll be. It, I'd, I'd eat my foot if it's less than 30 or 40 tons, this particular stone, even if it's a lighter um, type of stone. Notice how the team is pulling it. They're not just all leaning into it. They, they're going to all jerk on the rope and tug and tug, and then it starts moving. And once it starts moving, it moves very easily. They're moving it across very primitive, rough rails, much different from that last example. I'll put the links in the description to the video because half of the magic of this move is the, the community aspect of it and how they sing and chant, but look, they're going to tug, give it another tug, All right, and once it starts moving, they're just going to be walking, running speed with this thing, just sleds, wooden sleds moving across tree branches on the ground, not even lubricated, nothing like that as well. Um, and not even, there's big gaps between them. At some point, they're just going to run, uh, be pulling it over the, the earth itself. Uh, this is from uh, Sumba in Indonesia. It's one of the places that are you know, still practicing the megalithic tradition. And just, there's a collection here which is uh, great because no pulleys. Um, at one point, they're going to use a lever, uh, and you can see that they're. They're not practicing this either. They sort of just do it every once in a while when a chieftain dies and someone special dies, you know, he gets a big tomb monument built for him. This is a cool example because they're going to be taking it up a hill and what's important about it is, again, they're going to tug and each time it only moves a few inches. Now those two fellas at the back with the levers, their job is to catch it, but they're not practice. So the, yeah, the, the people up there on the levers is not, um, you know, working in sync with the rest of the team. So they, they have moved a little bit forward, but if they're more efficient and they've got more practice behind them, this is like, they know how to do it, but it's the little new, it's the difference between an amateur and professional. They're not eliminating the mistakes. But yeah, 
take note of the people there on the levers because you'll see that the block moves forward but those fellas at the back are not keeping up with the movement and the people who are dragging it are not like dragging on it, pulling on it and keeping the pressure on. It's a tug, it's a jerking motion that gets this uh, working. They're not using complex steel wire rope, they're using fibre rope and vine rope uh, to do this as well. Just wooden frames and stuff tied together and uh, I hope there is a little clip here so they're going to pull it but look at the guys, pay attention to the people on the levers at the back. They're the ones not uh, doing their job and because they don't do this every day but they do, you know, they know how it works but uh, if a team had been constantly working in Saxo Weimar or Machu Picchu or one of these places, uh, they would have voted, you know, that they would have got, gotten quite good at what they're doing and would be very, very efficient. Same principle here, I don't know, that, look, that block's, uh, I don't know, five, maybe up to ten tonne, I'm not sure, but it's showing an example. Just with primitive, you know, roller sled method, uh, a bunch of people working in unison, Unlike the oxen, these are you know, they, they're synchronised. It's a uh, a tugging, jerking motion. I've seen in as well as a shipyard where they a graveyard for ships, and rather than pay for expensive equipment, when they wanted to pull big chunks off the ship, they drive it right up to the shore, ram it aground as far as they could. But when they wanted to break off big pieces, because they had cheap labour, they just had guys on the end of ropes and they would just jerk, 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 and pull things across this muddy plain um, at, at low tide and drag it across a millimetre or even a portion of a millimetre at the time. It was just jerk, jerk, jerk. And they were moving, they were moving massive weights uh, with a small crew and just doing it very slowly, very incrementally. Here they've got more people available. It's a community thing, so they're also overdoing it. The, especially in these Swanbury early examples we saw, we need la much less people. Um, but this is a community thing and everyone you know, wants to get their hands dirty and be involved because I suppose you'd like lose face in the community if you, know, you didn't take part. And uh, yeah, we're gonna pull it on any second, but you see it's that jerking motion there, they've got it up. Uh, these videos are great, it's maybe a little bit sensory. I noticed when I put up just the raw compilation, uh, some people was a bit sensory overload because of all of the you know, whistling and, and howling and hooting that goes on there, but I think that's an important part because it's just uh, like in sports crowds, you see, you know, you get edged up, the adrenaline runs, you get you know, the, the, the chanting and that community aspect, it, yeah, dry, you know, it gives you that extra little bit of energy. Um, here they're pulling off a block, would it be by 50 centimetres by four, by two, so about four cubic um, metres, so, uh, anywhere from maybe 8 to 12 tonnes, I'm not sure of the exact weight. Um, but yeah, just that, that dragging fashion, so there's no motors involved here. Uh, they use trucks, in, in, but mostly they use the trucks as an impromptu sled because the, the truck motor is not going to have the, you know, the power to lift these things up and we'll see examples of it. But yeah, they've, they've moved it, they've dragged it and they're going to place it as like a capstone on top of that grave. Um, let me see some of these sort of you know the bits in between when they reset so let's uh, skip it along a little bit all right now for the next section and uh, they just reset they put put a few extra logs in there again to point out they're not using advanced uh, wire rope this is homemade stuff is this is all supported by wood and so you could take that truck out and replace it with a sled or a, or a platform if you know i notice how uh, suddenly skeptical people get um when, when it comes to you know, they'll look at for every little point oh but but blah, blah. well okay yeah the, the truck's just an impromptu sled and now they're going to move it on top of that capstone and then uh what they don't show is how they remove those tree um, pieces underneath to get it on the capstone but uh, well, we saw earlier examples so this is a collection of individual steps and stages that if you put this whole thing together uh, so all the experiments that, you know have have been done the parts have been done individually some of those experiments are multi-stepped but if you're um, 
it's often, well, I want to see a you know, reconstruction must be done to satisfy me. Now, all the reconstructions uh, have been done if you have any, under, you know, if you know how the world works and if you can do these individual steps, you need to provide a reason why multiple steps couldn't be achieved. Big team tugging on the rope, jerking, and they're going to move one. And uh, you know, friction's a big enemy on this particular move. And there is a portion where you can see the block, and it's uh, at least a metre thick, uh, about six by four as well, so about 24. And then uh, 40 tonnes, maybe up to 50 tonnes. Even the description of some of these, like the original videos, they even say it's a, a 50 tonne stone. Uh, if it's made of a, a granite or a basalt, it would be much heavier. I'm assuming it's like a, a, a sandstone, which you know, tend to be a little bit less, and even the weights that I'm giving you, I'm being very conservative uh, with those um, guesstimations that I'm making, but if I'm out, I'm probably out less than what the actual weight is, and if I'm over um, estimating the weight, it's by very very little and again you can use the people and the trucks and stuff as scale so if you you know you can in the comments leave uh, um, if i've got that correction going again the the guys doing the chant they chant in response and you can even through the video you can feel the, the the energy that comes with these things so whether it was the pyramids or peru or greece or rome um i think this particular aspect of you know of the the energy that comes from from the crowd and from from the chants is uh, lost, and just like this was a community thing, you know, b back in the day, you know, you would have had a, you know, if the big magnificent temples being built down the road, you know, you'd you'd want to be able to say, you know, say, tell the kids, the grandkids, you know, look, I I, I did that, I was involved um, in there, and. Uh, and, and at least, yeah, not to lose face in the community again. Not steel rope. Okay. The loudspeaker is a, a modern uh, convenience of there, but you could use an old-fashioned bullhorn as well. Uh, but again, they're moving this really big block, and in a moment, we're going to see from the other side of a rope, sort of looking back, and they're pulling it off the deck of a truck, and we'll see another example in not too long where they use a, a truck as a sled. So they reverse the truck into the pit, drag the block onto it, and then they drag the block and the truck out. The truck has, has got, you know, is, that's not pulling it out. Yeah, so jerking on these you know, homemade uh, ropes, you can see the block there in the background. It's over waist height. So even if the guy is short, that's at least a meter thick and uh, quite some, it's a impressive bit of stone. And uh, yeah, just that same sort of motion. Again, I'll put links in the description if you want to watch. I did a, these uh, moves in Sumba. I've just got a, a, a raw compilation so you can hear everything that's going on and the way they, and I've trimmed it down um, a, a fair bit. I'll probably trim off a couple of minutes now because yeah, you get the point. They're pulling on this big, tugging on it and they're moving a really heavy giant stone. If this was in the ancient world, and was on, you know, uh, hidden into tours were standing next to me, so they'd be, oh my God, this mega, this unexplainable, me how you couldn't pot, you would need 20,000 people working for 100,000 years to pull this. And well, it's, uh, it's a, a nonsense, and these are the questions that they're asking, and you know, and then they know about my channel, they know about the other ones, you know, who were talking about this as well and uh, they're deadly silent on this deadly deadly silent because yeah what the this is one of their cornerstones and if that the whole house would cr uh, crumble if they were to actually honestly um share information at the way that they pretend to they complain about the cover-ups and you know this you know the archaeologists are all covering it up Brian Foster and, and that crowd, they are the masters of cover-up, the masters of deception. Uh, here's another um, stone being moved. And notice that the rollers are, not even rollers, it's just, uh, they're just gonna slip it across that the, the wood is in the direction of the move. 
and yeah this is the one and then you'll see. so firstly they drag this block which is again you're looking at you know almost a meter um, maybe a little bit less but it's a huge block in length and quite wide as well so you know if, if it's not yeah you'd probably be looking at about uh, 50 tons it's a very long block I'd be yeah that's got to be well, 50 ton uh, probably at least people all pulling on the rope um, and again that we saw those earlier examples uh, so we've you know with the addition of levers this move would be much less and even the amount of people they got got going there is probably a little bit of uh, overkill you couldn't just do it with two people or you, you could but they'd be out there a really really long time like when really long um, but yeah with it if they had built a bit of a better sled and had better rollers and were using a few levers uh, the amount of people they've got there isn't it wouldn't be necessary and even and, so, and if that's what it took to, to move and lift up the stones at Saxo Weimar, well, so what? What, what? Couldn't the Emperor? Didn't have a, like a, is this, yeah, do you think like five people were working on these sites that they couldn't call in some, you know, for half a day, just call in all the young kids, you know, all the soldiers and say, look, we just need you on the ropes for a day. Uh, right, this is again another, there's, you just got sort of a glimpse there of multiple blocks like this as well. This is done as part of their culture to, uh, honor important people you know not everyone gets a, a megalithic uh, capstone on their grave they're, they're doing that that nothing all wood and rope yeah and so they get it on the truck and once it's on the truck they pull the truck and the thing and the whole sort of thing out and even this one you can see you get glimpses as uh, the, the crew isn't doesn't go so far in, back into a distance. It's not a huge amount of people either in this particular one. All right, there you go. This giant block again. That's going to have if that's um, that's not 20 ton. It's yeah. That's it, that's a big big block. Probably much heavier than that. Uh, this one's smaller or like lighter. But look at how many they got. They seem to have much more people on this particular crew than what they do on those uh, heavier blocks. Again, just to repeat, this is a, co a community thing. They're not getting the exact minimum amount of number of people to work it. They, everyone who's around is you know, going to want to lend a hand. Uh, again, they're using a loudspeaker, but they're getting that, you know, the chanting and then the replies and the synchronising of time that you, you can't achieve with a team of oxen. The oxen are obviously a lot stronger than a human being, but get a few human beings together and have them synchronised, they're better than, a, uh, than an ox in that way. Uh, let me just skip forward a little bit. Okay, here's the last uh, part. So just like we saw it, they dragged it onto... Oh, look, it's, look how... That's, that's an absolutely massive block of stone. That's really, really heavy. And again, the same... So they're going to drag it up the ramp. The truck is just rolling. You know, it's it's just a you know very you know a, a sled rollers that are just easy to use. But it's the crew pulling that up, so they're pulling the weight of the truck, the people standing on the truck, and of course the block itself. And notice it's uh, it seems to be maybe factory made rope, but it's not steel rope. Um, and then they're going to move this again, and then it, it, they don't just tip it off the truck as well. They sort of they make these graves, um, and these big blocks tend to be the capstones that sit on top of these graves for chieftains. All right, uh, so that's about it. It's a compilation of, of the things that are, have been achieved, and it, it, so again, if you hear this, well, it can't be moved, and you know, all this, and there's been no experiments done. This isn't an experiment, this is a continuation of the megalithic culture and it does exist.